never believe what I just found in my basement. It's quite possibly my most treasured possession. It's Toy Story 3, the video game. This is perfection. No one actually cares about this game. Because what wasn't it? It was never supposed to go like this. Everything bad in my life that ever happened started with that one game. That's it. I need a time machine. Finally, I can end this. Dear God, it's back. That's it. This is over. He's coming. I need to hide him. Guess this will do. It's Toy Story 2 the video game! This is beyond perfection. Toy Story 2 the video game. An action-packed 3D platformer that came out just before the 21st century. Between those who have played the game for a long time, and between players that have only played the game for about 10 minutes, it very clearly took some advice from the almost three and a half year old Mario 64 at the time. The game itself follows closely with the plot of the movie. For the duration of the game, you control Buzz Lightyear as he goes on a rescue mission to save Woody. Each level starting from Andy's house progresses the story as he and the gang travel through the alleyways and the polluted toy stores. All of it leads up to infiltrating the airport and getting on the plane to fight Stinky Pete and his henchmen. Throughout the years, an expanding group of players took interest in the game. They wanted to see just how fast they can complete the entirety of Toy Story 2 from start to finish. As time went by, the game would undergo countless different stages in its speedrunning life. There would be difficulties and hardships, and the future of the game was uncertain at times. But soon, a community would flourish and grow as more runners joined the speedrunning scene and made Toy Story history. This is the story of how the community used every ace up their sleeve and used it to their advantage. This is how speedrunners pushed the minutes down and optimized the game beyond anybody's wildest imaginations. This is the story of Toy Story 2 and its speedrunning legacy. The main categories of the game differ depending on the version of Toy Story 2 that you're playing. On the PC, PlayStation, and Dreamcast version of the game, you are required to collect a total of 40 Pizza Planet tokens to unlock the final boss. The N64 version of the game, as well as the emulator version, only require 30 tokens to unlock the boss. This video will be covering the 40 token category of the game. Now let's take a trip back in time as we dive into the world of SDA forums. On March 7th, 2012, two SDA users created a forum asking if anybody had the niche interest of running Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the rescue. They were interested in speedrunning the PSX version of the game and estimated the amount of time it would take to complete the run. The user Crash41596 referenced a 100% run of the game that was completed by a player named Teal Game Master. Another SDA user shared the video of the run with a time of 1 hour, 42 minutes, and 31 seconds, which later down the years was retimed to a 1 hour, 41 minute, and 43 second time with different timing rules. This would spark a light in one runner in particular, who would become a monumental figure in the N64 tool-assisted speedrunning community. On April 21st, 2012, a demonstration of the 100% speedrun was made public. The creator of the demonstration was Ring Rush. Now yes, this is not the 40 token category that was mentioned earlier, but this demo video would have a huge impact on the game, and there are many discoveries and tricks that were pivotal to each of the game's different categories in this demonstration. Before we dive into the video, let's learn about how the game is structured. The entirety of the game is made up of 15 levels. 10 of those levels are free roam and exploratory levels, or main levels. Each main level has 5 tokens. The remaining 5 levels are the boss levels, including the final boss. To progress through the game's 10 main levels, you will need to collect a minimum of 1 Pizza Planet token to unlock the next level, with the exception of certain levels needing a required amount of tokens. These tokens are essentially the equivalent of collecting a star in Super Mario 64. 
After each token, you are given the option to exit the level or continue playing. This allows the player to collect every single token in one visit if they wish, at least most of the time. Now let's do a quick dive into Ring Rush's video and get a hint of how he was able to beat the game in under an hour. The first level of the game is named Andy's House. The beginning of the run shows Ring Rush destroying a few enemies and collecting their dropped coins, after which he climbs up to the attic and begins the first mini-boss. This is the first of five token types that Ring Rush collects, the mini-boss token. Each of the main levels has their own mini-boss attached to them. After defeating the mini-boss in the level, they will provide you with a token. After the mini-boss is defeated, Ring Rush heads directly downstairs toward the garage room and does some nifty parkour to get on top of the car. As he drops down to the race car on the floor, we are introduced to our second token type, the race tokens. Each main level will have a race token that requires the player to complete a task in a given amount of time. For the race token in Andy's house, Buzz challenges the RC car to a race around the parked car in the garage three times. If Buzz wins against the RC car, he earns a token. But Ring Rush didn't do this race quite as intended. This was where the first skip of the run was introduced. The only check the game makes to confirm Buzz has completed a lap is if he passes through the finish line in the correct direction. Because of this, the race can be easily exploited. Before Ring Rush challenges the RC car, he pulls the shovel down from the shelf. After he begins the race, he climbs the shovel and jumps on top of the car and does this. Because Buzz is facing the correct direction each time he passes the finish line, the game is tricked into thinking a full lap has been completed. In actuality, Ring Rush is taking advantage of the primitive checkpoint system, completing the race in just 10 seconds. After finishing the race, Ring Rush collects some more coins in the living room and enters the basement. Ring Rush makes a few precise and well-executed jumps, and proceeds to push some cardboard boxes to reach the next token. Here's where the third token type is introduced, Secret Tokens. Each main level has one secret token, and the way you collect it differs from level to level. After collecting the token, Ring Rush collects some more coins before going back upstairs and entering the kitchen, where Bo is located. Throughout the level, Ring Rush has been collecting Bo's sheep one by one, and the last sheep happens to be located inside of the kitchen. This is the fourth token type, the collectible quests. Essentially, there is a token in every level that requires Buzz to collect five objects, in some scenarios people, and return them to an NPC. In this case, Ring Rush must collect all five sheep before returning to Bo in the kitchen, which earns him his next token. The last token requires talking to Ham in the living room. The last token type yet to be covered is the coin tokens. This is the reason Ring Rush was collecting coins throughout the level. Ham requires a total of 50 coins before getting his token in the level. After Ring Rush collects the token, he exits the level. This 5 token format is used in all main levels of the game. Since Ring Rush's demonstration was based around the 100% category, we won't be diving into the rest of it in too much detail, but this isn't the last time Ring Rush will be mentioned in this video. Ring Rush's demo was undoubtedly a monumental step for the game's speedrun development, and it would become the first step toward truly breaking the game. In August 2012, the Toy Story 2 SDA forum would have a resurgence in activity when a player named The Voss would start making dents in the 100% category. He pushed his personal best down to 1 hour and 11 minutes, which was incredibly impressive for the time. After his post, however, the forum laid silent for the rest of the year, but hidden away from these forums was a small but passionate speedrun group. This group did speedrun races under the marathon name I'm a Speedrunner 7. This group would later evolve into the International Spiral Grand Prix, where races are still hosted to this day. This specific group of players back in 2012 focused mainly on Disney games, and they had hosted many races. At the end of one of their speedrun events, they hosted a grand finale to see which player would come out on top. The game they selected for the grand finale was Toy Story 2, and the category they chose to run was the 40 token category. The race included four runners. Their names were Money Maestro, Crystal Fissure, Zade Skate, and Ratchet 5. These runners had raced different players in other games, and all four of them had come out on top. Now the four best players were competing against each other to see who would become the champion. At the time, they had no knowledge about Ring Rush's demonstration, so as far as they knew, all of their strategies were completely original. When the grand finale began, one of these four players emerged victorious over the rest. The player that would take the victory was Crystal Fissure. I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Okay. So, spam the Hooray. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, these, 
quick. Hold on. Crystal gained the lead after being behind his friends at the beginning of the race. For some of the first ever recorded runs, the amount of tricks they used was quite impressive. However, one strategy in particular saved a lot of time, and that was in the fifth level named Alleys and Gullies. At the back end of the level, there's a platforming section that requires a lot of tedious maneuvers, all of which lead to the secret token at the end on top of a trash can. Instead of doing all of that, Crystal did a trick called the Umbrella Jump, which skipped a lot of the platforming and helped him get coins faster. Even though he did fall, he had a backup strategy to jump off the back of the barrier to get the token. Ringrush had executed this in his demo, but this was the first time Umbrella Jump was used in a full run with video evidence. At the end of it all, Crystal was able to nail down a time of 1 hour, 27 minutes, and 27 seconds. The first ever 40 token record with video evidence, all completed during a rather large speedrun event. This would stand as the 40 token record for a while as the buzz for the game had died down, especially in the SDA forum mentioned earlier. That was until New Year's Day 2013 when a player dropped the first ever sub 1 hour 40 token speedrun. The player that performed this groundbreaking time was Muddy Maestro. Alongside Crystal and the two other speedrunners, Maestro was the other Toy Story 2 runner that took part in the grand finale event, finishing in last place. He wouldn't let that stand, and as the months went by, Maestro continuously improved his time. Finally, after many runs, he published a time that he was happy with, completely destroying Crystal's personal best. The actual date the run was completed was on December 21st of 2012. It was completed on the PlayStation emulator which was one of the most accessible versions of the game at the time. At this point, Maestro had learned about Ring Rush's demo and started using some of his strategies. In the second level, named Andy's Neighborhood, Maestro collects some coins and races the RC car for the second time. This race was not originally supposed to be completed this early, as the player is intended to have a power-up before racing him. Now, how exactly do you get this power-up? Well, by talking to Mr. Potato Head, of course. Hey, Bud! Hey, over here, Bud! Boss. Come here! Hey, Bud! Out of all of the main levels, five out of the ten of them have Mr. Potato Head. Depending on the level, a different piece of Potato Head's body is missing, and Buzz must find and return it back to him. Once Mr. Potato Head is a complete potato again, he will grant Buzz a new power-up. In this case, Buzz is supposed to have the rocket boots to race against the RC car, which is only accessible in level 7. But by walking into the RC car while he's driving, he will spin out and give Buzz enough leeway to win the race. This was yet another strategy originally used in Ring Rush's demo. Ring Rush had also discovered a plethora of other skips throughout the level, which Maestro also implemented in his run. After defeating the first main boss, next up is Construction Yard. The only noteworthy part of this level is the new power-up Maestro unlocks called the Disc Launcher. Following the Bun Masher boss that is Slime Time, Maestro enters level 7, Al's Toy Barn. This is yet another short segment of the run, as Maestro only goes to defeat the mini-boss in the level level before exiting. The next few levels are completed in a rather standard fashion. In the following couple main levels, Maestro collects three tokens from both Al's Penthouse and Airport Infiltration respectively. Along the way, he returns Mr. Potato Head's missing piece, granting him the Hover Boots power-up. This is the point where Maestro goes into a complete league of his own. After finishing Airport Infiltration, Maestro makes a revisit back to Al's Toy Barn. During this revisit, he collected the rest of the tokens he skipped earlier in the run. Along the way, Maestro used the Disc Launcher to get the Secret Token, used the Hover Boots to complete the Collectible Token, and unlocked the Rocket Boots. At last, Maestro had entered the final main level of the game, Tarmac Trouble. The first token he planned on collecting was the mini boss token, but getting there was a challenge. Maestro climbed the pole in the middle of the level and jumped onto the plane driving around in circles. Once the plane turned at just the right angle, he jumped on top of the wall where the mini boss was located. After he's defeated, Maestro collected two final tokens, that being the race token and the puzzle token. At last, he had enough tokens to begin the final boss. Maestro defeated Stinky Pete and his men and finished the run. A 53 minute and 56 second time, later retimed to a 53 23. Following the first ever sub hour 40 token run, Maestro would continue to compete in speedrun races with other Toy Story 2 runners. His time in the 40 token category was over, but his legacy and his record stayed on top. Wow, this is weird. I don't remember ever playing this game. I mean,. How long has this just been in my basement collecting dust?
You okay, man? As 2013 whizzed by, the record saw no competition for quite a while. Speedrunning was still evolving at this time, and many dormant games would soon find their community. Fast forward to mid-2013, a new player had immersed himself into the speedrunning scene of Toy Story 2. A player who went by the name Nixie began to optimize the game. Nixie mainly focused his efforts on the 30 token category as he played on the N64 emulator version of the game. He uploaded speedruns and highlights of his speedrunning ventures in Toy Story 2 on YouTube and created guides for each level in the speedrun. But soon, Nixie's videos would attain the interest of two more players. The new players were Cheese and Cereal and Lance. These three would become fast friends and work together as a team to push the game to its limits. This trio was filled with motivation to take on the challenge of breaking a classic childhood game. Cheese and Cereal, otherwise known as Adam, was the first runner to find Nixie back in the middle of 2013. At the time, he had not completed a full run of Toy Story 2 and was mainly a theory crafter. A little further down the road, Lance joined in. Lance had been involved with Toy Story 2 for a long time and even had strat videos that predated Ring Rush's demo. Lance would help Adam come up with strategies and discoveries. Adam and Lance were the brains, Nixie was the brawn. This was the game's first generation. The three worked together to push the time down in both the 30 token and 40 token categories. While Nixie was running the 30 token category, Adam set his eyes on the 40 token run at the beginning of 2014. Though he was mainly a strat finder, Adam decided to take a step out of his comfort zone. He was going to take down Maestro's record. He did many runs and it took some time, but on the 27th of January, he would pull off his first record. The first big difference in the run was in Andy's neighborhood. The mini boss at the top of the tree is supposed to die after taking three fully charged laser shots. When it gets hit, it spins around for a few seconds which makes it invulnerable until it stops spinning. This is how the developers intended the boss to play out, but as it turns out, they didn't expect you to go outside of the box. When the boss begins, an invisible box encompasses the entire platform where the boss takes place. However, there is a weak spot that the developers oversaw. The very edge of the tree leaves extend just outside of this box. When the player steps on these leaves outside of the box, they are considered out of bounds of the boss fight, meaning the boss can be defeated in seconds due to the boss's invincibility being deactivated. This was discovered by none other than Adam himself, and saves about 20 seconds. A few more levels had received minor route optimizations. In alleys and gullies, he chose to get the secret token, and then exited and re-entered the level to get the race token. Other minor optimizations included a faster jump to the arcade machine in Alice Spaceland, found by Lance, a faster strategy to climb up the train in Alice Penthouse, found by Nixie, and a faster route to climb the rocket ship in Airport Infiltration. In the final level, Adam was able to save a hefty amount of time because he had an extra token from Alleys and Gullies. Because of this, he skipped the boss token in Tarmac Trouble, which overall saved another 20 seconds. Adam finished his first world record, cementing himself far ahead of Maestro's former record. His final time was 50 minutes and 28 seconds. With the new strategies discovered with the help of his friends, Adam had pushed the time down by over 3 minutes. But the three friends were far from done with this category, and Adam's friends were going to help him push the game to new heights. Adam had complete dominance over the category. After achieving the first sub-50, he continued to push his time down even further to a mid-46 minute time. Of course, this didn't occur without new strategies. 
For starters, Nixie discovered a faster way to defeat Zerg. The way Zerg moves around the map is meant to give him a fair amount of distance away from Buzz. He does this by rubber banding away from the player when he takes a hit. To keep him from doing this, Nixie discovered that by jumping off the edge behind Buzz's spawn point, Zerg will become attracted to the corner of the boss area which heavily restricts his movement. When Buzz spawns back and hits him again, Zerg can no longer escape as he is trapped. Adam used this strategy in his run, and it undoubtedly paid off. This saves about 10 to 15 seconds on average. In his 4624, Adam used a new clip in airport infiltration by utilizing the conveyor belt and the suitcase. By ground pounding and turning at just the right angle, Buzz can phase through the wall. The clip happens to take Buzz right next to Rocky, who starts the race token. This skips the need to traverse around the other conveyors. Adam missed it on his first try, but managed to get it second try after waiting 10 seconds for the next suitcase, which still saved time over the intended route. All of these skips and more were used in his next runs. Yet one more time save was found in Andy's house. In the kitchen, runners had to jump on top of the fridge and go around the kitchen to get Bo's sheep. But with these conveniently placed spoons, the three discovered that you can hop off the edge of the hitbox to get to the sheep faster. With the discovery of this new skip, as well as the other skips the three had discovered, Adam completed this run. Adam, with the help of Nixie and Lance, had completely destroyed the category. With the exception of a few costly mistakes, this run was daunting. The amount of new discoveries that had been made in the run were growing little by little. The game was still in its early phases and the time could still go down further, but Adam was satisfied with his progress. His 4554 was the last record he would set in the category. The first generation of players had made their mark on Toy Story 2, and their efforts would stand the test of time in this speedrunning scene for years to come. The next big runner to find themselves in the spotlight wouldn't set a record for about a year after Adam's domination. The player that continued this story was a member of the first generation community. They were a successor to Adam's domination of the game, and he goes by the name of XYX, otherwise known as Brandon. Unfortunately, many of these amazing runs have since been deleted from YouTube and are no longer viewable today. Brandon clearly had a ton of speedrun potential as soon as he completed his first record. He was already two minutes ahead of Adam's time. Not long after, he achieved a new record with a time of 43.06, a nearly 50 second improvement. It truly is unfortunate we don't have access to these runs. All of the new strategies used in these runs are now lost to time. At least, they almost were. Thankfully, the community was able to save a couple of these runs before they were deleted, and one of these records would be the very next one that he would set. For starters, Brandon changed up the route in Andy's house and decided to do the living room first before going to the garage. This change helped him get the sheep faster and it meant he wouldn't have to spend time bouncing around the room. He also implemented another precise trick in Andy's basement. Previously, runners would spend a good 15 seconds setting up these cardboard boxes to grab the secret token. This was always a drag and as it turns out, it wasn't even necessary. Instead, Brandon jumped on top of the tallest box, jumped off at the edge and performed a double jump at just the right time to get on top of the platform. 15 seconds had been wiped away just like that. In Elevator Hop, Brandon had developed faster strategies for the grappling hook. Using quick first person movement, he was able to align Buzz just right so that he could grapple upwards even with the fan blowing against him. If the two fan cycles are skipped, this can save up to around 10 seconds. Later in Al's penthouse, Brandon used a slightly different route to get to the mini boss faster by jumping on top of the doorframe. Brandon was on another level. This run, along with his previous two records, were just the beginning. 
To kick off 2016, Brandon once again lowered the time by nearly a minute. This time, he implemented a strategy that had been known for years. It was one of the skips used back in Ring Rush's demo. That's right, there was still another trick he used that had not been implemented in full runs. At least, not until Brandon came along. As shown in Maestro's time back in 2012, getting to the mini-boss in Tarmac Trouble takes quite a bit of waiting, and thankfully, there was a much faster way to get there. But to see that, we're going to have to take another look at Ring Rush's demonstration. Let's slow this down for a second. Ring Rush grabs the rocket boots and lines himself up with the wheels of the vehicle. Just before running into the wheel, he double jumps onto the support beams and maneuvers around the top so he doesn't hit his head. Once he gets Buzz's feet on top, he aims himself toward the wall and performs a perfectly timed double jump. Just as the rocket boots run out of fuel, he grabs the ledge and proceeds to approach the mini boss. Now, let's look at this in real time. Yeah, that is crazy. Executing all of these inputs while going three times faster than normal is no easy feat. To add more stress, this is done at the very end of the run. It makes sense why people opted to get two tokens in alleys and gullies and skip going for the mini boss in Tarmac Trouble, but Brandon decided to be bold and went for it. He was able to pull it off successfully for the first time in a run and lower the record to a 4103. A month later, Brandon lowered the time to a 4050 and then a 4036 a few days later. He was still far from done lowering his records, especially with a new milestone that was slowly becoming more and more realistic. A sub 40 minute time. It was going to be a daunting task to get there, but it wasn't impossible. Especially with Brandon's motivation to take down the record, anything was possible. And on the 6th of April 2016, Brandon would make Toy Story history. And the best part? This is his second record with surviving video. Brandon had blown the competition clean out of the water. He completely smashed the next 10 minute barrier, and it wasn't even close. His house space land and airport segment were phenomenal, and he topped it off with a gold segment on the final boss. This was truly an incredible run, and Brandon decided to take a break from the category for a while. A year and a half later, and still no one could top Brandon's sub 40 milestone. So like any god of any video game, Brandon came back to the category. He returned and began to de-rust his speedrunning skills. In the middle of his de-rust, he did something absolutely incredible. He didn't just beat his time, he revolutionized the run. The sheer execution and persistence in this run makes it all the more unfortunate that the video has been lost. But there were many new strategies that were implemented that can still be demonstrated. For starters, Brandon skipped the race token in Andy's neighborhood. For the past five years, runners have been collecting all five tokens in Andy's neighborhood in one visit. But after some retiming, it turns out that it is faster to collect the other four tokens on first entry and then revisit the level again later after unlocking the rocket boots. Now the route included a revisit back to Andy's neighborhood, which saved about 7 seconds. Now we've glossed over most of the boss fights, but the Toy Barn encounter boss fight saw a huge discovery that sped up the fight. Each time the boss takes a hit during its first phase, a cutscene of robots exiting a capsule plays. Buzz is not supposed to regain movement until the camera returns to him, but by charging up Buzz's spin and hitting the robot, Buzz's dizzy animation plays during the capsule cutscene. If the animation finishes during the cutscene, Buzz regains his movement earlier than normal. This trick allowed for quick kills on all of the enemies. This was the first time Buzz was seen moving during a cutscene since back in 2013, when Nixie went AFK in the middle of a text box and returned only to see Buzz had disappeared. Turns out he had actually fallen during the cutscene because of the terrain, a funny occurrence that turned out to be a precursor for future events. Other than a few revisits to level 5 and level 7, there was one more big strategy that was found. This trick isn't quite like the others discussed so far. There were theories that this was possible for a long time, but the execution required to nail it was unbelievably precise. To say this is one of the most respected strategies in the game is an understatement, and this trick would be given quite the fitting name, the YOLO Strat. 
In airport infiltration, runners typically did the race token first before collecting the other two tokens. Buzz is given a total of 60 seconds to collect all of the weights located near the starting area, which is usually more than enough time. So much time, in fact, that Nixie speculated you could start the race token, collect the weights, and speed climb up to collect the secret token and Potato Head's missing piece all in a 60 second window. Oh, and then the runner has to have enough time to return to Rocky at the end. And lo and behold, Nixie was right, it was possible, but the window for error was slim to none. This was the craziest strategy discovered in a long time, and it saved roughly 15 seconds. The climb needed to be perfect, the fall down had to be smooth, and if the runner is just a few seconds too late, the race has to restart and the run is over. Most players at the time didn't even consider going for it, especially since the strat took place in the last 10 minutes of the run. But Brandon was feeling particularly confident on the run he was on, and without a second thought, he went for it. Against all odds, he did it successfully. He had completed one of the hardest tricks while on world record pace. An absolutely incredible feat, and now he just needed to close out the run. He nailed the ring rush skip, finished tarmac trouble, and defeated the final boss flawlessly. The time he set was a 38.27, a one-of-a-kind, nearly perfect speed run. This run is admired and heavily respected by the community, and Brandon was well and sure the king of Toy Story 2. And this record would stand for a long time. Wait, you're telling me people can beat this game in less than 40 minutes? Well, yes, but we're not even playing on the same version they did back then. Upstairs? Yes. You wanna try the other version? No. This record stood on top for years. It was an incredible display of how determination and perseverance pays off. But behind the scenes, there was another reason why the record stood on top for so long. Back in the early days of Toy Story 2 speedruns, the category that runners played the most was the 30 token run. In fact, most of the community was focused on the 30 token and 100% runs, but the 40 token category was left in an awkward state. This was largely because the PC version of the game that required 40 tokens was not compatible with many computers at the time. This meant most players were stuck playing the emulator version of the game which only requires 30 tokens. For this reason, many players didn't run the 40 token category. However, the community didn't turn their backs on this problem forever. A speedrun.com user named HDC0 attempted to make the game playable on PC devices. On December 7th, 2016, HD figured out how to start making the game playable on computers. With the help of Adam and a few other players from the community, the patch was made public for players to use. It wasn't until 2017 when most players had access to the game on PC. Even after it was officially instituted as a main category, the 40 token run laid dormant for years. This is not to say Brandon's record wasn't impressive. It was a beautiful run, and it would have probably stayed on top for a long time even without these issues. But the inaccessibility to the PC version undoubtedly impacted the world record progression. During the downtime of the 40 token category, a few spots in the run had been cleaned up. An improvement was made to the route in Alice Penthouse that utilized a somewhat new and developing strategy called the Shadow Jump. The concept of this strat was originally found by a runner named Strudel, and interestingly, he found it while watching a review for the game. Strudel noticed something peculiar at the beginning of the video. When he took a closer look at the footage, he noticed Buzz's jump animation stop suddenly in mid-air, which is not normal. After some testing, Strudel discovered that on certain parts of level geometry, known as the shadow box, it tricks the game into thinking that Buzz is standing for a minuscule amount of time 
Within that time frame, the game grants Buzz an additional jump. This newly discovered strategy impacted the route in Al's penthouse. Now runners could skip the cardboard box completely and alternatively run to the back of the room and jump off of the windowsill due to there being a shadow box in the corner. Now, trying to hit the shadow box and trying to jump off of it at the same time is pretty precise. Thankfully, there's a technique in the game called buffer jumps that made these new strategies much easier to execute. If a player presses the jump button twice in quick succession, Buzz will perform a double jump and land back on the ground. But if the player presses and holds the button a third time after doing a double jump, Buzz will jump again on the first frame he touches the ground. Runners could utilize this trick in many areas of the run to save time, particularly when executing the shadow jumps. If performed well, this saves about 5 seconds over the old route. With the discovery of these new strats, and with the 40 token category officially taking the front page of the leaderboards, the world record started seeing some contenders. There were two players that started to creep up on Brandon's territory. One of those players went by the name Andit. After playing the game for fun and doing individual level runs, Andit had joined the community in the summer of 2019. He was a quick up and coming star in the community. The other player creeping up on Brandon's territory was Beast Assassin. Beast had joined the Toy Story 2 community in late 2019 and helped push down the 100% category of the game, achieving a world record soon after he joined. Oh my god! Uh... His time would soon be beaten just a couple of weeks later by Andit. Both players had incredible talent and were capable of taking down Brandon's time. The two players set their sights on the over 2 year old 40 token record in February of 2020. Andit and Beast had never ran the 40 token category before, but they were quickly able to implement their skills from their 100% runs into this category. And in the middle of February, one of these two players got a strong run. On February 15th, 2020, Andit was on a great pace. Leaving the slime boss, he was just 20 seconds behind the record. His Al's Toy Barn segment was phenomenal, and the same trend continued throughout Spaceland. With the new Dizzy Stress that had been implemented into the Toy Barn boss fight, he managed to gain even more time on Brandon. Whereas Brandon struggled on some of the grapples in the ventilation shaft, Andit flew through them, and now he was just 5 seconds behind. Leading up to Al's penthouse, Andit tried his hand at the shadow jump at the back of the room. It took a few tries, but Andit managed to pull it off. It was all coming down to the last few levels. Unfortunately, he fell short at the end of the run. He finished almost a full minute behind the record, but how? He seemed so close to passing Brandon earlier in the run, and he was. But the pressure got to him in airport infiltration, and he chose not to go for the yellow strat. It was just too daunting. There was still a chance you could get the record without it, but as the runs became more and more optimized, it would become more difficult to have a chance at the record without going for it. Regardless, Andit did set a new personal best, and his journey wasn't over quite yet. Two weeks later, Beast Assassin started up his runs once again. His best time was just a few tantalizing seconds behind the record. He got on a run that was about even with his personal best by the time he entered Construction Yard. However, this is where disaster struck. On the climb up the construction area, Beast had just missed the first platform cycle, which forced him to wait for the platform to come back down. Because of this, he also missed the second platform cycle on time, and he had to play the waiting game once again. By being just a second too late to the first cycle, Beast lost nearly half a minute overall, and was over 45 seconds behind the record. Beast attempted to salvage the run as much as he could. He got a gold on his first Alleys and Gullies visit, and took out the slime boss quickly. 35 seconds behind the record. Past the Owl's Toy Barn race and Mini Boss, 33 seconds behind. He slowly started to claw his way back into the green. Through the Toy Barn Encounter Boss, 20 seconds. Past Elevator Hop and his second Alleys and Gullies visit, 15 seconds. After having an extremely quick Zerg boss, Beast had shrunken the gap between him and Brandon down to just 5 seconds. But now, the hardest trick had dawned upon Beast. And he daringly put all his cards on the table 
and YOLO'd it. He had done it, and now he just needed to pull ahead. Beast had taken down the champion. After half a decade of Brandon's reign, a new player was finally on top of the category. Beast had made profound history in the world of Toy Story speedrunning. A few days following Beast's record, the time would swiftly be improved once again by an experienced Toy Story 2 player and an all-around profound Toy Story speedrunner. The name of this runner was Capri Dog. Capri had focused most of his efforts in the 30 token category of the game back when he joined in 2016, but around the time Beast took the top spot, Capri set his sights on the record. On March 2nd, 2020, Capri took down the record by a large chunk. In fact, he managed to take the time below 38 minutes. Capri had developed a better setup for the mini boss in Andy's neighborhood. He chose to jump on top of the branch placed directly behind him instead of the one at the far left, which runners have been doing up to that point. This gave him a better vantage point to collect the token at the same time it spawned, which skipped the actual cutscene of the token spawning. This, combined with incredible execution of strats throughout, secured him the first sub-38 minute run with a time of 37 minutes and 52 seconds. Five months later, Capri's time was still standing atop the rest. He was rather far ahead of the rest of the community as the only runner with a sub-38. But during the first week of August, one runner had returned to the category. After missing his chance at claiming the record back in February, and it was back. On the 6th of August, and it had a run that was on pace to beat the record past the Zerg boss. By the time he started the final boss, he was 10 seconds ahead. But and its health bar was much lower than he wanted it to be, and he got overwhelmed by the boss. And it finished just two seconds behind the record. A heartbreaking loss. But he didn't let this run deter his motivation. On August 8th, and it had another shot at the record, and he was going to show exactly what he was made of. When it seemed like the run couldn't be optimized much further, and it took a good 26 second chunk off of the record. This wasn't made easier with new strategies or any other discoveries. This was a showcase of pure skill and perseverance, and just how much potential this game still had. Yes, it finally works! Now we can practice some of the speedrun strategies they used! That's it, I quit. Wait, but you just started- No, I quit. That's strange. No, right? Shortly after Andit set his record, yet another new player would join the Toy Story 2 speedrunning scene. He started to make leaps on the leaderboard, going from a good runner to a world record threat. And in December, he was going to make history. But before the story continues, there was an important change made to the entirety of the Toy Story 2 speedrun leaderboards. The change of the timing rules. Across all of the runners, there was an issue that was becoming more and more apparent as times became more optimized. 
When entering a level, the loading times would differ depending on how well your PC ran. Considering there are at least 15 load times in the run, runners could lose between 15 seconds to over a minute compared to runners with faster computers. This introduced the new timing method named Loads Removed Time, or LRT for short. This replaced the old timing method called Real-Time Attack, or RTA. Adam and HTC Zero created an auto-splitter on Live Split to accommodate the timing changes. Runners across the board would now be on a much more even playing field. With this new timing method now in place, the next world record challenger would make his name known. This is Mr. Logout. Logout was a part of the community since May of that year and had already been practicing a month prior to joining. In September, Logout would focus his efforts on the 40 token category and started working his way up the leaderboard. Before he knew it, he would become the king of the category. Buckle up, because the route would see one of its biggest changes yet. For starters, Logout had discovered a reroute in Alice Toy Barn that utilized the shadow jump that Strudel had found. The shadow box was located on top of the vent that led to the mini boss. Logout's route consisted of going to the mini boss first, then going back out of the vent and making the very precise jump to land right on the shadow box. Logout miraculously pulled this off on his first try, but don't be fooled. This is one of the most precise tricks in the entire run. This shadow jump allowed him to get on top of the taller cardboard boxes that were normally only accessible using the hover boots. Now that Logout had reached atop the boxes, he could collect the lost chick located on top of the box, which now meant he could collect all five chicks and get the token from their mama. Aside from the secret token, every other token was collected in Al's toy barn in one visit. The second big route change took place in Al's penthouse. Logout chose to collect every single token in the level rather than getting just three. These reroutes in turn had a domino effect earlier in the run. Ever since the beginning of the world record progression of Toy Story 2, runners had always collected every single token in Construction Yard. But these reroutes completely changed how Logout played the level. Instead of collecting all five tokens, he only needed to collect one of them. These huge changes to the route helped Logout claim the first ever sub-37 minute time. Funnily enough, if the timing rules hadn't changed, he would have lost to the former record. This would be the final record set in the year of 2020. A new year, a new era for Toy Story speedrunning. It had been half a year since the record for the 40 token category was improved, but soon Andit would come back to the category and set another world record. But contrary to what many players would have expected, almost all of Logout's new strategies were nowhere to be seen in this run. And it still followed the old route despite all of the updates and improvements that were made up to this point. However, it was hard to blame him. After all, he still got the record with the old strategies. Did Logout's reroutes really save that much time? These runs in particular showed how these two runners adopted vastly different mindsets. And it was consistent and calculated, opting to go for safer and more reliable strategies. Whereas Laga was innovative and more daring than most runners in the community. The following month, Logout fired back at And It's Time and achieved yet another milestone, the first sub-36. Once again, the record was improved by pure skill and incredible execution throughout. Another major barrier had been broken. Broken. Shortly after this record was performed, Adam, HTC Zero, and Andit created a new and improved auto splitter that was implemented in July of 2021, and this improved the loads removed timing method that is still used today. Speaking of July of that year, this month would become a landmark in the speedrunning history of the game. A new trick had been rediscovered, but it wasn't like the rest. This was truly one of a kind. What just played on screen was a clip from the Vost, one of the SDA users who shared his times in the Toy Story 2 forums back in 2012. In this clip from October of that year, he accidentally discovered one of the biggest strategies in Toy Story 2 speedrunning, text storage. 
When the camera pans toward a token after defeating a mini boss or completing a race, Buzz should not be able to move. At least, that's what the consensus was until runners were able to use Buzz's dizzy animation to break the Toy Barn encounter boss fight. But the community quickly realized that that same strategy didn't have to be isolated to that one boss fight. If he collects the token at the same time the camera pans back, the text box that normally appears after collecting a token is absent. The game will proceed as normal until Buzz stands still, which triggers the text box to appear. Back then, players weren't sure how to make this useful in a run, and it was seen as just a weird glitch. Runners like Strudel ran into this mysterious phenomenon over the years, and little was understood about it. But when Spaghetti, a relatively new runner, rediscovered it and presented it to the community, there was a much different reaction. This shockwave of development brought Nixie back into the community. Nixie and Lance did some digging and tested a ton of theories for the newly rediscovered glitch, and it completely shook the speedrun as they knew it. In the token text box, there is the option to exit the level. When choosing this option, Buzz flies away into the sky before the level fades to black. This one animation made text storage as broken as it is today. This is the video Lance shared with the community. In Owl's Toy Barn, Lance performs the Dizzy Strat and gets text storage after defeating the mini-boss. Then, he goes to the storage room to talk to Ham. When Ham's dialogue is activated, the token text box appears below his dialogue box. By skipping Ham's text, Buzz can now move with the token text box active, and by positioning himself just right and selecting Exit Level, he can do this. He could collect the secret token right as the level faded to black. Just like that, the Shadow Jump and Owl's Toy Barn had become obsolete. Now the route follows as such, collect the two tokens in Owl's Toy Barn, and then revisit the level later to collect the other three tokens. This was faster and much easier than Logout's initial route, but that wasn't all. Spaghetti, Lance, and Nixie had found another huge strategy. In Tarmac Trouble, the run consisted of collecting three tokens in order of the race token, puzzle token, and then the mini boss. Tech storage completely change that. Now, the run would have Buzz defeat the mini-boss first and get tech storage. From there, the route goes down to the race and talks to Slinky. This time, the runner will select continue playing on the token text box so that Buzz regains movement without finishing Slinky's dialogue. Now Buzz can waltz right over to where the race token spawns, finish Slinky's dialogue, and collect the token before it's given a chance to exist. These new text storage strategies were quickly adopted into runs, and well over a minute was saved. These discoveries revitalized the community, and ideas and new potential strategies were brewing in the community. This was the beginning of something amazing. With this new game-breaking strategy being brought to the attention of the community, Andit and Logout's friendly rivalry would continue to spark new milestones in the speedrun. Together, they motivated each other to bring their personal best down as low as possible. And here was the result. At the beginning of 2022, it was discovered that collecting an additional token in Construction Yard and getting the race token in Andy's neighborhood was the fastest route. Before then, the route briefly reverted to collecting 5 tokens in Al's penthouse, but this new route was faster and much easier. Now it was coming down to the wire. Andit and Logout had been pushing this category down for 2 years, but they weren't done yet. The question was, who was going to take their rightful place at the top of the leaderboard? Would Logout's daring nature give him the upper hand, or would Andy be able to pull through the mental barrier and take the victory?
At the end of it all, Andit and Logout went above and beyond the expectations of the community. Ultimately, the world record fell onto Andit's shoulders, achieving a 34-26. These two players had revolutionized the speedrun, and their efforts would be remembered fondly by the community. For the next few weeks, the speedrunning dust had started to settle. It seemed as though things were finally coming to a head, and the run had now hit a wall in its speedrun progression. A mid-34 time was incredibly impressive. Surely there was no way anybody could improve the run any further. And yes, I'm totally kidding. Out of seemingly nowhere, one of the most talented Toy Story 2 runners had joined the community and swiftly took the record. Less than two months after submitting his first time on the leaderboard, this runner would quickly become one of the most influential people in the community. Not just in his skill, but in his love and care for the game. He was passionate, and he wasn't going to let anybody stop him. Their name is Solarson. Solar joined the community in early 2022, and right away his determination shined brightly. And it helped ease Solar into the game, teaching him everything between the biggest strategies in the run to the smallest optimizations. And it acted as Solar's mentor and continuously encouraged Solar on his journey. In fact, Solar was the runner that came up with the most recent route. From the very beginning, it was clear that Solar had a ton of potential. On March 12th, 2022, just 19 days after Andit set his 3426, Solar would swoop in and claim the record. His time was just two seconds faster than Andit, and the craziest part? It could have been a record by close to half a minute. Leading up to airport infiltration, Solar was 15 seconds ahead of Andit, but when he did the YOLO strat, he missed Potato Head's missing piece on the way down. He was able to complete the race successfully, but he had to go back into the room to retrieve the piece, which lost him 25 seconds. Leaving the level, he was almost 10 seconds behind Andit. On the last couple segments, Solar cleaned up a few mistakes Andit had made and was now just a couple of seconds behind going into the final boss. It all came down to the final fight, and Solar, by the skin of his teeth, squeezed out a new world record. Solar was not very satisfied with his new time. It was a monumental occasion, yes, but before the YOLO strat, Solar very well could have gotten the first ever sub-34. The fact that he got the record with a 25 second deficit shows just how amazing this run was. For the next few weeks, Solar was going to completely shock the community and take the time down farther than anybody could have imagined. This was the beginning of Solar's revolution. I'm the fucking ghost, dude! Oh my god! In just a month and a half, the record had gone down by nearly a full minute thanks to Solar. 
Even after taking a break for a while, he was still on a roll. Not only did he achieve the first ever sub-34, but he kept going until he got a mid-33 minute time. An absolute monster of a record, almost a full minute ahead of anybody else. The most mind-blowing part was that there wasn't any new tech discovered to aid Solar. No new strategies or discoveries of any kind. He saved a minute by merely executing all of the previously known strategies to perfection. After a few months had passed, Solar was still far and away in first place on the leaderboards. Nevertheless, he kept trying to push his time down. On July 7th, Solar was at a decent pace at the halfway mark, but in the latter part of the run, costly mistakes started to occur, and going into tarmac trouble, he was 13 seconds behind. This would have been game over if he didn't have one last trick up his sleeve. Back when Tech Storage's potential was revealed a year prior, Lance had found a third Tech Storage strategy that happened to take place in the last level. This was the first ever back-to-back -back Tech Storage strategy. Going into tarmac trouble, Solar did the normal tech storage strat, but instead of grabbing the race token outright, Solar positions himself a few steps away from where the token spawns. While doing so, he lines up Buzz so that he's looking between the slime and the token. When he finishes Slinky's dialogue and triggers the token to spawn, he approaches and takes damage from the slime just before grabbing the token, which prevents the token text box from appearing once again. Now that Solar had executed the tech storage successfully, he can now skip the puzzle and launch himself up to grab the secret token. This clutch play barely put him back ahead of his personal best, and he squeezed out a new record. But he wasn't out of the clear yet. On the same day, Logout became the second person to get a 33 minute time with a 3348. Solar knew his throne was at risk, and he kept pressing on to improve his time. On July 10th, while on a call with Logout, Solar got a new record by 10 more seconds, closing out a 3324. Interestingly, Solar didn't go for the puzzle tech storage strategy. It was understandable as it's one of the last tricks in the run, and messing it up can either lose you up to 6 seconds if you fail to get tech storage, or completely kill the run if the token is missed. Solar was initially happy with this new time, being celebrated by the community, including Antit, the person who aided Solar since the beginning of his journey. With all of the commotion occurring at the top of the leaderboard, there was one thing that was becoming clearer with each passing day. The community was closing in on yet another huge milestone. A sub-33 minute time was starting to look feasible, and talks surrounding the topic became more common. New discoveries were few and far between, but that did not deter these runners, least of all Solar. In the middle of November, Solar found himself on a pretty average run at first. However, after executing a new tech storage strategy in Elevator Hop, he was far ahead of his record. He managed to keep this pace going for the rest of the run, nailing nearly every trick. He was very close to getting on sub-33 pace. Just 7 seconds shy of the milestone, but an incredible improvement nonetheless. Now the Toy Story community knew for certain that 32 was possible. Solar's resilience and determination had quickly set him aside as an incredibly gifted player. During the same year he joined the community, he had cast a tidal wave of world records across the game as a whole. He really was the true king of Toy Story 2. A new year, a new era, and new motivation for world record competition. Right out the gate at the beginning of 2023, Solar set out on a journey to get the first 32 minute time in the game's history. On January 10th, Solar was on just the right pace. After nailing the Yellow Strat, he found himself about 7 seconds ahead of his personal best. If he kept this exact pace, he could barely squeeze out a 32. He still had three more main level segments in the run, and Solar held all the cards. During the Alice Toy Barn revisit, Solar missed a jump onto a platform. He was still ahead, but his lead had reduced by a few seconds. Still keeping the pace after Andy's neighborhood, Solar goes for the Ring Rush skip. First try. The mini boss and tech storage? Flawless. The second tech storage strat for the secret token? Nailed it. 
This was the fastest Solar had ever completed Tarmac Trouble, and he was back on 32 pace. All he needed was this final boss to go perfectly. A heartbreaking finish. Just another slot of health, and Solar maybe, just maybe, could have achieved the coveted milestone. But alas, it wasn't meant to be. With this unfortunate occurrence at the very end of the run that should have broken the game's last minute barrier, Solar would have to settle for now. Well, at least for the next 11 days, because on the 21st of January, Solar came back with pure determination. He had made a few minor mistakes by the halfway point of the run, but he was able to pick himself back up into the green. He cleaned up his mistakes in his last record, and he once again found himself barely on 32 pace. His best possible time made it clear that he had a chance, but that chance could slip away at any moment. As seen countless times before, runners had come agonizingly close to breaking new barriers in Toy Story 2, only to be heartbroken at the very end. Solar himself experienced this just a few days prior. Was it going to happen again? Was history going to repeat itself? Not on Solar's watch. On January 21st, 2023, Solar made history. Quite possibly, the final minute barrier in the game had been conquered. This run was a spectacle and a showing of how hard work and persistence can truly pay off. Back in the early days of Toy Story 2 speedrunning, the entire community was made up of just a few people with Nixie, Adam, and Lance at the forefront. Before then was an even older community that merely found joy in racing each other in licensed games. Now there was a brimming community filled with motivated runners and an abundance of new strategies. This game, along with its runners, had truly evolved into something special. It was no longer just a nostalgic game, but a game that could be broken and pushed to limits never seen before. And all of these players had proved that. And yet, there was still one more discovery that never saw the light of day in speedruns. You see, a reroute for one of the levels was discovered months back, but runners didn't dare go for it in speedruns. A strategy riskier than double tech storage in the final level. A route scarier than going for the YOLO strat in airport infiltration. Nobody was willing to go for it in their runs, surrendering the potential time save the route granted. All except for one runner, and it was the one who created the route. Back in 2020, Logout used the Shadow Box jump in Al's Toy Barn to get four of the five tokens in just one visit. His route was quickly overshadowed as the precision needed for the Shadow Jump was way too difficult, and for a while, different routes were used. But Logout actually had the right idea. He was just missing one crucial piece of the puzzle. Back in 2020, Tech Storage wasn't discovered yet, and as it played out, that would be the final piece needed to create the hardest strategy in the entire game, Ultimate Al's Toy Barn. This route is crazy. It required not just one tech storage strat, not just two. Logout found a way to use tech storage for all five of the tokens. It goes without saying that the precision needed was mind-boggling. Runners had to execute tech storage on all five tokens in a row. Friendly reminder that standing still at any time will ruin the glitch. Runners start by collecting the chick near the start of the level, and then heading to the mini-boss to perform tech storage. Since the player cannot stop moving, this makes the setup for the already precise shadow jump much harder. Then the run goes down to the chicken to start the race token and use this text storage to move freely during the text box. Here is where things get even crazier. The run goes back to the beginning of the level next to Rex's tutorial cube, which has a text box of its own. By finishing the chicken's dialogue at the same time Rex's dialogue is activated, the race token spawns and Rex's text appears instead. 
Since the A button is responsible for both jumping and progressing the dialogue box, the runner has three A button presses to make it to the token before the dialogue box disappears. If done successfully, the token will grant the player another tech storage. Then the route continues to collect the chicks, uses the dizzy strat to get tech storage on the collectible token, and last but not least, the route ends with one last trick. You're f***ing kidding. Wrap it up. Yeah. It's over. It's oh, it, it's over. It's over. It's over. The precision and accuracy needed for this three minute segment cannot be understated. Even Solar didn't want to attempt it, especially after failing the route countless times at the end of the level. But to the dismay of the community, this was the fastest route. Getting all five tokens meant they didn't have to revisit the level later. So was it worth it? Not for most runners. And after seeing some of the best players fail the route time and time again, it seemed it was just a little too much to ask for in a speedrun. It was just too difficult. But it seemed wrong to give up. Despite its absurd difficulty, it was possible. And knowing that his job wasn't finished yet, Solar came back to the category. And no one was ready for what was going to happen next. First try shadow box. I got first try shadow box. I don't care. I don't care. I'm done. I'm done, bro. I lost like five seconds. In alleys and gullies because my monitor was turning off. And then I lost like three seconds in elevator hop because my monitor was turning off. If my monitor didn't turn off, it would have been so much better. The world does not want me to PB, but I still PB, bro. I still PB. Today, the Toy Story 2 community continues to grow and expand. As time moves forward, new people eager to make speedrun history continue to join the speedrunning scene. Many other players have made their own profound impact on Toy Story 2 and shaped it to what we now see today. The future of this community and the people surrounding it is a mystery, but one thing remains clear. This is not the end. These runners are going to continue the story of this amazing game for years. Regardless of what will happen next in its speedrun progression, one thing is for certain. All of the people a part of this community are incredibly talented, and wherever they go, they will always have a place at the heart of the speedrunning scene.